Alright, hello there and welcome to Oxygen Not Included. Today we're just going to do a really quick tutorial video on something called a carbon dioxide lock. So the carbon dioxide lock, as we can see here, just uses a couple tiles of carbon dioxide in a shape like this. This prevents the gas from one side going and transferring to the other, however it does not completely stop the temperature difference. Uh, as temperature will slowly bleed through here. Carbon dioxide, however, has a very low thermal conductivity of 0.015, which is actually a little bit better than a regular sandstone insulated tile, which means that this carbon dioxide will be transferring less heat across in total than these two insulated tiles that are blocking the gas flow. Now this is a very useful tool, uh, just because your duplicates can run straight through it. Alright, we can see here the very basic construction of a CO2 lock. This is without any gases in it, we're in my test world now. And as you can see, we just have to have a 2 high area for the duplicates to come in, and then they'll just go ahead and jump around uh, the corner here, and they'll continue on their way. The carbon dioxide will fit in this little T-shape here, and you'll have one gas on the other side and your base on the primary side. Now just to give you an idea of how easily an a carbon dioxide lock can be created, I've gone ahead and filled up our test area here with three duplicates and a decent amount of oxygen and oxygen only. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up some doors here. Uh, that'll let us limit access and we will actually stop people from exiting the lock. The reason we're going to do that is so that we can send all of your duplicates in here and they will go ahead and exhale carbon dioxide into our CO2 lock and fill it up quite quickly. Alright, you can see here that according to the cycle timer it has been the better part of a cycle, however our CO2 lock has successfully completed simply by waiting here and having our dupes locked in breathing out carbon dioxide. So we'll go ahead and let them out. And we can go ahead and take a look at the lock properly. Now, a CO2 lock does not actually need very much carbon dioxide in it, and it is mostly beneficial to have a low quantity of carbon dioxide in your lock, just because that's less mass to transfer heat. Alright, to go ahead and show off how well the CO2 locks, I've gone ahead and put in a bunch of chlorine gas at 1000 kilograms per tile at 326 degrees celsius. I just barely put this in, and we can go ahead and see that the CO2 lock at 300 grams as opposed to 1000 kilos is not budging. There is absolutely no gas for transfer, gas transfer over, and the only thing that will interrupt us is if you potentially have some water or liquids get in here and break the CO2 lock before you can refill it properly. So if you have someone pee in here, you may want to temporarily block the area off until you can properly reclaim the carbon dioxide in the proper locations here. The heat transferred by a carbon dioxide lock as well is very little, especially if you only have a small amount of mass in your carbon dioxide lock in the form of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, again, has a thermal conductivity of 0.015, making it better than a regular insulated tile, and if you couple that with a low mass, there will be very little uh, heat being transferred over it to begin with. That means you should be able to just stick a weaswort over here, even one planted by a pip in a natural spot, and it will keep that temperature right down, no matter how hot it is on the other side. And to end the video, I'll show you really quickly the process I used to build this. All I do is you have an area coming off of your main base, and then you just make a little V-shape, just like so. And then above the middle, you put a two height area, and put a top on there. It will take your duplicate some time to build it, especially if you are using insulated tiles. However, this is all you really need. 
Uh, I do tend to like to pair this with a little outpost area for my duplicates to go and take a break, take a breath, otherwise catch some oxygen. But it is not necessary to keep uh, non-oxygen gases or anything else, honestly, out of your base. We will go ahead and do one final test here and I'll show you how carbon dioxide behaves when it's met with an extremely low pressure. Alright, for the sake of testing low pressure, I've gone ahead and made a complete vacuum on one side and added in that same uh, massive amount of chlorine at a high temperature on the other. So this carbon dioxide will actually go ahead and spread over here as you will see. But even though it's only at 1 to 200 grams, it is still holding uh, that, that chlorine gas back perfectly fine. That makes a CO2 lock very easy, very quick to build. It's very easy to prime it because you don't need any water, you just need carbon dioxide which duplicates will naturally exhale every time they breathe oxygen. You will have difficulty uh, making a CO2 lock if you have no oxygen in the area for duplicates to breathe, but that's easily rectified with an algae terrarium. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to support more content like this in the future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers!